There has to be a better way. Hi, my name is Ethan, and I had a lot of fun working on this project. Let me show you how it works. All right, let's start with the base. So there's an Arduino Mega that's controlling everything, a DC motor controller for the two arming assemblies. There's two 18650 batteries. And in the front, there's a 16 by two character display with three buttons for the interface. On two of the sides are probably my favorite parts of this whole thing. The dart loader and the arming hook. So on the dart loader, the pusher is attached to a timing belt driven by a simple DC motor with a magnet and two Hall effect sensors acting as limit switches. There's also an infrared sensor to detect the darts that are in the loader. The arming hook assembly was quite the challenge, as it takes quite a bit of torque to pull the plunger of the Nerf gun back. Eventually, I landed on this block and tackle setup. So here's the main pulley that just has a spool of this 50-pound uh, fishing line. And from that spool, it just goes into a bunch of these other smaller pulleys, and it just snakes up and down a bunch of times, multiplying the force. So the turret itself is pretty densely packed. Let me take it apart and give you a closer look. So this is the Nerf gun assembly. It consists of the Nerf Jolt that has a plunger sensor with a magnet embedded in it and a Hall effect sensor, a through beam sensor that will detect uh, the presence of a dart and then finally there is this servo right here that pulls the trigger. Right next to it is the vision assembly. 
It has an open MV H7 camera, a LiDAR distance sensor, and then three LEDs. Uh, right behind it is the main tilt servo. And right down there, hidden underneath, is the locking servo. And then covering the back is the distribution board. The reason for that locking servo is to lock the tilt in place as the arming hook pulls on the Nerf gun to arm it. The tilt servo isn't strong enough to hold its own position. The program for this thing is pretty simple. It's running a Har Cascade facial recognition algorithm. Uh, somebody a lot smarter than me figured that out, so all I had to do was just copy and paste this example program and modify it slightly. This is what a frame from this camera looks like. It is a grayscale image that is 240 pixels wide by 160 pixels tall. This coordinate for this top left pixel would be 0, 0. This bottom right pixel would be 240, 160. And the center pixel would be 120, 80. For each loop of the program, a still frame from the camera is evaluated and the program will output an XY coordinate to the Arduino. When there is no face in frame, the program will output zero, zero. When a face enters the frame, a rectangle is drawn around it, and the center point of that rectangle is calculated. In this case, it would be 43, 112. This loop of capturing a still, searching for a face, and then outputting coordinates happens at a rate of about 15 times per second. Here's a clip of what the camera is seeing. If you take a look down here, you'll see the output. Once the Arduino receives the coordinates, the distance to the center of the frame is calculated. In this case, it would be 120 minus 43, which would be 77 pixels away from the center, and then 80 minus 112. Since this distance is greater than zero, the Arduino will add a few degrees to the current positions of the servo. The larger the distance to the center, the more the servos will be moved. Here is how the turret moves when the face is close to the center. And here's how it moves when it isn't. When a face is finally centered in the frame, the Arduino will measure the distance to the target using the LiDAR sensor. If the distance is further than three feet, the turret will fire. As I was testing the turret, I got tired of getting shot in the face, so I added a 12-inch offset. Using the distance measured from the LiDAR sensor, the Arduino will calculate how many degrees it needs to move to tilt the servo 12 inches below the face. The greater the distance to the target, the less the turret will have to rotate to maintain that 12 inches of offset. Even though this thing does work, it isn't perfect. The loading sequence, for starters, is very slow. The face detection is very picky about lighting, and you have to be within about 8 feet for it to see you. Also the program could use some improvements, specifically the control loop used to center a face in the frame, and the scanning logic that switches between tracking a face and searching for one. The control loop is what keeps the face centered in the frame. To lock on more quickly, I implemented what is called proportional control, which is where the 
further the target is from the set point, the quicker the turret will move. And as you can see, this does keep the face center in the frame, but not very well. Uh, it kind of just circles around a little bit. To fix this, I would need to implement what is called integral and derivative control to create a full PID control loop, but I was, uh, I was too lazy to do that. The last issue is a logic that switches the turret into the scanning mode. As soon as the turret loses a face, it immediately starts to move. If the lighting isn't perfect, the face detection is spotty, which will make the turret move away from the face that is actually there. To fix this, I could implement a dwell period where the turret will remain in its last position for a few frames before actually switching into scanning mode. I could pick this thing apart for a while, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with it. Anyway, thanks for watching.